Hey guys, welcome back into another video. Today we're going to be discussing some more exciting attacking chess. And for this kind of mini series, I'm going to focus in some lesser known games, which I think, uh, let's say, the history of chess kind of uh, was missing out about. We will be discussing some games, we, you know, not necessarily of uh, very famous players, even though I got to say at this specific uh, example the player is gonna be the two both players is gonna be very famous we have Boris Gelfin playing with the white pieces um, former world champion contender versus Vladimir Kramnik also a world champion contender and a world champion uh, so uh, Boris Gelfin was playing with the white pieces the game started off with the move d4 uh, the reason I chose this game by the way is because uh, you know, Vladimir Kramnik, a player which is very much well known for his very subtle positional style, brought about in this game basically all of his attacking, let's say, urges or, you know, whatever you want to call it. Like, uh, he really created this attacking masterpiece, which is very very successfully did so but you know not in every day you see such a game by a player such as Vladimir Kramnik so we have d4 d5 c4 c6 the Slav defense knight c3 knight f6 knight f3 pawn to e6 e3 knight b to d7 queen to c2 so far so good this is all very very standard opening theory moves and after the move bishop d6 which is a normal developing move. Uh, Boris Gelfand chose to play a very aggressive move in this position, pawn to g4. For those of you who have never seen this move in this position, this might come as a very surprising move, not really, not the most standard move, but this is actually a very theoretical move. It was already played thousands of times in practice. White's idea is very straightforward. He wants to sacrifice uh, the pawn on g4 for the sake of some initiative. For example, rook g1, followed by rook takes g7. Um, so black is not in any way obliged to take the pawn. There are many moves to choose from, but this is not a video which is uh, discussing opening theory so much. The point is not to uh, present to you necessarily the strongest, you know, <laughs> opening recommendations right here. Um, but Kramnik chose a very interesting move, bishop to b4. This is a little bit of a counterintuitive move, moving the same piece twice. But this has a very specific idea in mind. I think Kramnik in this position had the intention of taking control over this important outpost on e4. So for example, in case that white goes g5, at any point really, black has the option of just going knight c4. And thanks to the pin on the knight, on c3, the knight on e4 is actually feeling himself very comfortable. So bishop d2 was played, preparing to go long castles. I think White has made it very clear that after playing an aggressive move such as g4, he's not having any intentions to go for short castling. So queen e7 was played, another developing move. White played pawn to a3, bishop takes c3, bishop takes c3, and now black spent the move to finish the development of his pieces with the move b6. Once again, he's not interested in capturing this pawn on g4, which gives white some initiative with the open g file, so he's just not concerning himself about that, he just seeks to finish uh, his development. And after the move, bishop to d3, bishop to a6, trying to exchange uh, the light squared bishops in order to deprive white of his two bishops' advantage. Queen to a4. Pawn takes e4, queen takes a6, this is just a trade of pieces, c takes d3, queen takes d3, black castle short, and after the move g5, knight e5, bishop d2. 
Now this is where the game starts to be very interesting. Once again, as we know, White is planning to castle his king on the long side and trying to come up with some attack on the king side. Black on the other hand will try to attack on the other side of the board, which is a very important concept when we talk about attacking the enemy's king in chess. And very often the sharpest type of position that you can get is a position where both sides are castling the kings to the opposite directions and thus creating a scenario where it's very easy to attack your opponent's king since you can push your pawns, go for a pawn storm without weakening your own king so much and this creates lots of sharp positions. And right now Kramnik uh, played a very interesting move which I actually really like, pawn to f5. This is a slightly counterintuitive move since he's moving the pawn on the same side as his king. Usually that would be a faulty strategy, basically weakening his king position. But in this case, Kramnik understood that one of White's main threats is to push his pawn to e4. And basically by this force the white, uh, the black knight out of the outpost on d5. So white castle long, he didn't even bother taking on f6 on the ampasson since this would open up black's f-file for example. I think queen takes f6 actually pretty much uh, wins material, right, because the knight is hanging. The knight cannot really move since then the pawn on f2 would be other attack, so taking on f6 would be actually just impossible. So white castle is long, and this is where the game becomes very very sharp. The first move that kind of signals black's coming attack in this game is the move pawn to c5. By this move black has very simple intentions to open up the c-file and position his rook in a position to the white king. This is why Boris Gelfin played this typical prophylactic move, prevention, Put his king on b1 because he understood the potential attack on his king on the c file so this is a very common strategy when you castle your king on the long side you want to move your king one more square towards the corner in order to be safer and this is really where the fun begins in this position i think kramnik realized that by taking on d4 and opening up uh, the c-file, he's not going to have a very strong attack only by this because the white king has already moved away and there's not that many things to search for in the c-file. He understood that he has to open up more open lines facing the white king. So black to move in this position guys and let us think what could be black's next move? Well, how do you try and open up more lines against the white king. This is our, maybe the first rule of attacking in chess is that you have to open up lines for your pieces to attack your opponent's king. If the game is very closed up, then it might be just very difficult to do. So the move is pawn to b5, which is a very cool move. Not only threatening to push black pawns forward with moves such as c4 or b4. It also offers white a pawn sacrifice, which Boris Gelfin accepts. He plays the move queen to b5, which is an understandable decision because if white is not taking the pawn on d5, he's going to be attacked anyways. So I think what he told himself that at least let me take a pawn, right? At least if I'm going to get under attack, I want to have some material benefits. But this gave black, this gave black a very, very serious initiative. Rook a to b8 is played, attacking the white queen, queen to a5, rook to b3. So black is planning this very simple idea of doubling up the rook against the white king. King to a2, stepping out of the open b-file, 
Rook from f to b8, threatening the pawn on b2. And now white plays the calm move, rook to b1. So far, so good. Black already achieved quite a lot in his attack, I would say. His rooks are very well positioned to attack the white king. But you see that white is not cracking up that quickly. He actually found a very solid defensive uh, maneuver. Putting his rook on b1 and thus not exposing his king to the attack on b2. So at this position, black is already having some well-placed pieces, but in order to continue the attack, he must find some precise moves to um, basically bring some more pieces into the attack. Now, guys, this is another critical point in the game. Try to think about the next move. How would you basically open up more lines for your for more pieces to join the attack and i would put my very best emphasis on the black queen because you know any successful attack should include your queen if you have your queen in reserve always think about how to include it in the attack this is your strongest piece no doubt it should play a role in the attack so the move was e5, very passionate move, very strong move, allowing black not only to open up the center of the board, but also opens up this diagonal, because Vladimir Kramnik realized that this is the diagonal where the white king is being positioned, so by putting his queen there, he understands the, basically the importance of having uh, the queen eyeballing the opponent's king. So Boris Gelfand played rook h to c1, a very logical move, bringing also his own reserves to the, defen to the defense of his own king. Queen e6, continuing the attack. As you can see, there are lots of tactical ideas involving the removal of our knight and our rook facing white king on a2. Just one idea from the back of my mind. If white ignores what black is doing, black can play knight c3 check. And this is actually almost a forced checkmate. White takes on c3, rook takes b2, double check. King a1 is the only legal move. And then bang, checkmate. So, white played the only sensible move, king to a1, removing the king from black's threat and right now black black's next kind of um uh black six how to bring his pieces kind of into action because he already moved his queen his rooks are well positioned what's the next step right so he takes d4 is being played Taking advantage of the fact that the pawn cannot recapture since white will lose his knight on f3. And in this position, I think what happened to Boris Gelfand that he got a little bit panicked and he played the move rook takes c5. This move really didn't help his defensive role at all. It actually, as we shall see very soon, only helped Black's attack. Uh, if white plays uh, probably a solid move, I'm not even sure what to recommend, but basically not rook takes e5, you would have still decent chances, maybe yeah, the move such as h4, just uh, defending the pawn on the, on the king side. He played the move rook takes e5, which was a bit of a harsh move he got too in my opinion he gets too uh, kind of afraid of black's attack maybe with a good reason and now after knight takes e5 queen takes e5 white's idea was basically to eliminate some pieces out of black's attack 
But this was not a very effective strategy since it didn't really eliminate Black's main pieces in the attack. The two rooks, the knight, and also the queen on e6. And in this position, Boris came up with a brilliant sacrifice, knight to c3, which was the killer blow of this game. White is now faced with an impossible choice of bad moves. Of course, the knight cannot be taken because this would lead to a checkmate in one move. This is the easiest variation. If the bishop takes, then nothing special, we just take it back. Once again, he cannot take on c3. And on the next move, we are going to take this pawn either with our pawn or with the rook, both with very, very quick checkmates. So, Gelfand was counting on this defensive resource of knight takes d4, but this really didn't help too much, as now came the tactical idea of rook takes b2, rook takes b2, and now can you find the brilliant, brilliant finish line? Queen a2 check, rook takes a2, and now rook b1 check and mate by the way if white is not taking the rook on b2 but he takes the queen then you can choose between rook takes b1 and rook a2 both with checkmate so after the move rook takes b2 white already resigned at this point he realized what is coming and, you know, it's not every day that you see a player in Gelfand's caliber losing in such a, you know, you can say, uh, such a aggressive manner. Looking at this game from the outside, you know, I would probably think that this game was played uh, not between Kramnik and Gelfand, uh, Gelfand and Kramnik. Probably I would think about players more aggressive, maybe like a... I would think about the Karpov versus Karpov versus Kasparov encounter or anything like that. Definitely not those guys. So to me, it was a very fun game to watch. Hope you enjoyed it as well. There were some fine parts there about the slow buildup of the attack. The key moments of this game was definitely the move uh, B5, which signaled uh, starting of the black attack. The move E5, if you remember, was very critical with the idea to bring the queen to face the white king on the same diagonal. And after black's pieces got basically all of them on the right places, we had to find this tactic starting with the move knight c3, which was already uh, gave black a decisive advantage and a very quick victory. So I was Asaf Givon right here with you guys, um, and I hope you enjoyed this video. Take care, guys. See you later. Bye-bye.